Do you know what polycystic ovarian syndrome is or what some people call polycystic ovarian disease? And are you aware that many women have failed to conceive, have failed to get pregnant because of polycystic ovarian syndrome? In this very particular video, we are going to talk about how you can conceive with polycystic ovarian syndrome, what causes polycystic ovarian syndrome, and by the way, we are also joined by a fertility expert who will be giving us more light about conception with polycystic ovarian syndrome. You shouldn't miss this. Ask Dr. Othman Musawawo. Hello my very good viewers, welcome to Ask Dr. Uthman YouTube channel, a channel where you learn medicine at the comfort of your living room. I told you if you'd like to get in touch with me, to have a private chat, a private conversation, go to my website www.dr.uthman.com and make an appointment. We shall chat privately, I'll be there to help you in case I can. And if you'd like to also interact with us, go to all our social media platforms, the name is Ask. Dr. Uthman on all our social media platforms, we shall be there to interact. And today we are talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome, or what some people call polycystic ovarian disease. What is this animal called polycystic ovarian disease? This is something I would like you, my viewers, to really understand so that you do not fall a victim of this great animal. Now, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or polycystic ovarian disease, is a condition that affects women of childbearing age or what many people say women of reproductive age who are these women these are women who are still having a high chance of producing what i mean by this these women are between 11 to 49 years that is according to the world health organization we put women under childbearing age to be uh, uh, in the category of 11 to 49 years however there are some extremes because there are some girls who menstruate who start menstruation at the age of nine at the age of eight and they are able to conceive but generally it's from 11 years and then also there are some women who can still go for menstruation at the age of 50 60 years and they can still conceive those are extremes but generally Generally, it's supposed to be between 11 and 49 years. So this condition affects these women and where does it attach its own way? Where is the problem? The problem is that their ovaries develop numerous fluid collections. They develop numerous fluid collections or we can call them follicles, fake follicles. What is happening is that Every woman has two ovaries, and within these ovaries, there develops eggs. But now what happens in polycystic ovarian syndrome is that in this ovary, one of the ovaries, or both of them, will develop many fake eggs. And these eggs, all these balls, will be filled by fluids. And therefore, during the time of ovulation, this woman will not be able to release a mature, good quality egg instead it will be these fake follicles that will be roaming around and therefore the woman may not be able to conceive so what causes this animal what is the problem what goes wrong in the body i am telling you i must be very sincere with you my viewers that the main cause the cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome is not known. The specific one is not known. Therefore, doctors or scientists have not yet confirmed the actual cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome. But what we know is that women with high male hormones, because what you should know that every woman has a small percentage of male hormones, like any man has some small percentage of female hormones. But now, if the male hormones increase in a woman, and at times they can even outweigh eh, the levels of uh, the female hormones, then this woman is likely to develop polycystic ovarian disease. And therefore, this is one of the areas where doctors have really said no, most women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome actually have such and such. Therefore, if you have high levels of male hormones, you have higher chances or you are at a great risk of developing polycystic ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease. And we have also found that this stuff runs within the families. 
especially the first degree relatives. So if your mother had polycystic ovarian syndrome, or your sister, or any of your first degree relatives, then there are very high chances or you are at a very great risk or you're prone to getting PCOS or PCOD. And also, another issue is abnormal hormones, especially the insulin. It has also been found that people with high levels of insulin in body are prone to getting, to, to, to getting polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's why polycystic ovarian syndrome is common in people with uh, diabetes type 2. And there are theories also suggesting that diabetes type 2 can lead to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So any of them can lead to the other. But what we know is that with DM type 2, you are likely uh, to get polycystic ovarian syndrome. Also, people who are obese, people who have overweight are at a great risk of getting polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now that we know about the risk factors or what causes the polycystic ovarian syndrome, we need to understand what are the signs and symptoms of ovarian syndrome. Of polycystic ovarian disease. When will how will you know that you have polycystic ovarian disease? This is the time I am joined by Dr. Amarach, a fertility expert from Nigeria. Let's understand from her what are the signs and symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Dr. Amarach, so how does a person with polycystic ovarian syndrome look like, or how do, can someone know that they do have polycystic ovarian disease? Hi, Dr. Uthman. Thank you for having me on. I am just going to jump right in. We can only say a woman has PCOS if she has two out of these three criteria. And the criteria is called the Rotterdam criteria. The very first one is irregular periods. The normal cycle length is between 21 days and 35 days. So how you actually know your cycle length is the period of days, the number of days in between your periods, counting from the very first day that you saw your period to the last day before your next period. In um, PCOS women, it's usually greater than 35 days. And this typically translates to about eight cycles or less than eight cycles in one year. Some PCOS women actually see their periods only six times in a year, sometimes four times in a year, or no time at all, like no period at all in a year. So this is actually irregular period. Then the second criteria is increase in male hormones. Typically, a woman should have more female hormones than male hormones, right? But when she has more male hormones, she starts to present with acne. Some of you call it pimples. Or she starts to have hairs. She just notices hairs, excessive growth of hairs on her arms, her legs, her chest, her chin, sometimes her abdomen as well. And then it can also cause an increase in blood level, in, su in sugar blood levels, in blood sugar levels. And then the next, um, the third criteria is actually on an ultrasound scan. When you go and do an ultrasound scan, you see polycystic ovaries. It's just, it shows like small, tiny black circles at the edge of the ovary. And these are cysts. In, in PCOS, cysts are not big, they are small, they are tiny little circles. So the, 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 once you have two out of these three criteria, then it is PCOS. For example, if you have irregular periods and, PC and um, polycystic ovaries on an ultrasound scan, then we say you have PCOS. Some women actually notice weight gain, sudden weight gain when they have PCOS, but this is not general. It's, it doesn't happen to every woman with PCOS. Uh, thanks so much, Dr. Amarach. By the way, Dr. Amarach also has a YouTube channel and you can follow her. I will put her link in the first comment here. And now, Dr. Amarach, make us understand, make my viewers really appreciate this. How is polycystic ovarian syndrome going to cause infertility? Because this is where most of them are really, I have a lot, many, uh, over, many follicles in my ovary. Then how is it going to affect my way of getting pregnant. How does it do it? Okay, so the first thing you should know is that every month the ovaries have a particular amount of follicles present. So, and each of these follicles contain one egg each, but only one follicle will release its egg 
only one follicle will end up having a mature egg that will eventually get released. I will show you how. In a non-PCOS ovary, the communication between the brain and the ovary is direct. There are follicles present in every ovary and each of these follicles contain one egg each. So on the second day of your period, the brain will send a message to the ovary through a hormone called FSH. Now this hormone will tell the follicles on the ovary to please grow. At some point in your cycle, one or two of the follicles will decide to grow. And when it grows, the egg inside it will mature and it will now release the egg into the fallopian tube. This process is called ovulation. Then later, the egg will stay in that tube for sperm to come and fertilize it. Then the ovary will now send another message to the brain through another hormone called estrogen and then the, to tell the brain to stop producing FSH. But in a PCOS ovary, the communication between the brain and the ovary is not exactly direct. And this is because PCOS ovary has small follicles on the edges of the ovary. And these follicles are called cysts. On the second day of your period, the brain will send a message, just like in the non-PCOS ovary, to the ovary through FSH to tell the ovaries, to tell these follicles to grow. This tiny little cyst, but none of them will respond. None. But after two or three months or four months or five months, one will decide to grow. And when that one grows, it will act because it contains an egg too. It will grow and release a mature egg into the fallopian tube, also called ovulation. Now the egg will wait for a sperm to come and fertilize it. After this happens, the, the ovary will send a message to the brain through that same hormone, estrogen, to tell the brain to stop producing FSH. Wow, very interesting drawings there from Dr. Amarach. Now, Dr. Amarach, what my viewers are right now interested in is knowing three things. Number one, is this animal treatable? Can it be treated? Number two, is it curable? Can I get rid of it completely? And lastly, which is very, very important, can someone with polycystic ovarian syndrome get pregnant? Firstly, I would like to say that this should not actually replace your doctor's prescription. It should not replace your doctor's advice because there are several ways to actually tackle PCOS. There are several ways to manage PCOS. Miss A might have a different treatment from Miss B. This, this information is actually very important because I don't want you to feel like your doctor doesn't know what he or she is doing. Now, that being said, treatment of PCOS, or management of PCOS rather, is usually aimed at improving the symptoms and reducing the risk factors. So I'm just going to give like a broad, like a general treatment option for PCOS. I'm going to start with birth control pills. Birth control pills, that's the one that has um, combined hormones, can help to um, improve the symptoms of patients that have few periods or no periods at all and it can also help with patients that actually have excessive hair growth but you should know that once you stop this pill the symptoms may come back another treatment option is exercise and dieting it's kind of difficult for women with pcos with women with weight gain as a result of pcos to lose weight but when they lose the weight it helps to improve the symptoms. The third option is in vitro fertilization, IVF. If you're familiar with my page, by now you will know everything about IVF. IVF is a fantastic option in women that have infertility as a result of PCOS. So if you're trying to conceive and maybe you've been trying for years and you have gone through 
fertility, several fertility treatments, IVF is an option for you. It's a form of assisted technological reproductive um, way to actually conceive with PCOS. Wow, thanks so much, Dr. Amarach. And to you, my viewers, they are mainly five points to take home. If you have polycystic ovarian syndrome and you'd like to conceive. Number one, lose weight. Number two, make sure that you lose that weight. Number three, my friend, lose a lot of weight. Number five, please lose weight. If you had 100 kilograms, put it to 75. Put it to 70. And then plus the other medicines she's talked about, you'll be able to conceive. But if you do not lose weight, forget about pregnancy, especially if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome by the way if it's your very first time to watch this channel please don't forget to subscribe and also press the notification bell in order to be notified of any upload we make and if you'd like to have me to have a private consultation with me to have a private chat with me please book an appointment through my website that is www.drothman.com make an appointment we shall be there to chat and you can find us on all our social media platforms the name is ask dr uthman sign out ask dr uthman